anyone charged with a crime here at Lamoureux where we represent This actually comes minor. to the district That's attorney's the office. Crime. There the are a lot of steps that need to be placed before him. Um, when a crime is committed, this actually comes to the district attorney's office. This actually comes to the district attorney's office. There are a lot of steps Navigating through the juvenile justice system can be overwhelming at times. This video was created to help families of alleged juvenile offenders better understand the juvenile justice system. In this video, we will find out what happens when a youth breaks the law, introduce you to some of the court officials, provide information regarding the court process, and finally provide tips for families involved in this process. If a youth under the age of 18 is detained by a police officer for breaking the law, the officer has a number of different options. The officer may release the alleged offender with a warning, issue a citation requiring the youth to meet with a probation officer or appear in court at a later date. The officer may also make an arrest. When an arrest is made, the officer may release the youth to a parent or book the youth into juvenile hall. Let's take a look at what happens when a youth is booked into juvenile hall. When someone gets arrested, usually I'm the first person they see. When someone comes to me, they're going to go through a medical pre-assessment and this is solely just to make sure that you are medically stable to be booked into juvenile hall, whether it be because of drug usage, accidents, or prior medical conditions that you may have. After the medical screening, we go through a pre-intake process to determine where you're going to be housed. This is going to be consistent of gang questions, if there's any, gender, age, and charges that you may be in on. After that, we will continue on with a search, a shower process, fingerprints, and photographs. Part of the intake process after you're searched is we inventory the property you are wearing, meaning your clothing, your shoes, jewelry. Jewelry, money, anything of any value will be put in the safe until you are released and or your parents can come pick it up. After that, you will sit in one of our cells for a, a short period of time before medical continues on with the a more detailed screening process. Once the screening process is complete, the youth will be assigned a living unit, assessed and enrolled in school, and offered a variety of programs. Some of the programs include a daily educational video series called BEEP, outdoor sports and exercise, and free time in the evening for activities, phone calls, and board games. The youth will also have access to medical, dental, and mental health services. Now that we have heard what happens in the booking and housing units, let's hear from some of the court officials. The role of the public defender is to represent the young person that's charged with a crime. The public defender's office becomes involved at the initial court appearance. We become appointed, and that could be at an in-custody detention hearing or at an out-of-custody proceeding, which is called a proper pretrial. If a family has not retained an attorney, the public defender's office will be appointed as the attorney for the young person charged with a crime. The goal of the public defender's office is to zealously defend and vigorously advocate for each and every single client. What the public defender's attorney will do at the initial court appearance and at future court appearances is discuss the charges with the young person and his family. We will explain different options and different consequences of the crimes that he or she may be charged with. We will look at different options for resolving the case if that's what the client would like to do. Options for resolving the case can include deferred entry of judgment, informal handling, um, completion of community service, counseling, therapy, treatment. We would look at different services that may best suit that particular client, maybe drug rehabilitation, maybe help with school services, maybe mental health treatment, and we would try to find the best course of action for each client. Most of the cases at juvenile court don't go to court trial. A court trial is explained to every client, and every client has the right to choose to take their case to trial. If that's the course of action that's going to be taken, we would do investigation, we will work with a team of investigators that works in the public defender's office. Alongside the attorneys in our office, we also have investigative assistants, paralegals, 
clerical staff, interpreters who work within the office, everyone who will be able to help that client either go to trial and fight the case or successfully resolve the case and then do well on probation. Before a case actually comes to the district attorney's office, there are a lot of steps that take place beforehand. Um, when a crime is committed and police are called out to the scene, the specific police agency may have an informal program in place. So they may try to impose community service or have the minor do um, an apology letter or whatever else they think is necessary. If that is not successful, police agencies will submit a filing to the probation department. At that time, the probation department assesses the minor's background, how the minor is doing in school, what kind of family background they have, whether or not this is the first time that they've been contacted by police, the nature of the crime, et cetera. If probation thinks that it's appropriate to try to handle the matter themselves, they may in turn try to handle the matter by imposing their own sanctions such as community service, apology letters, and et cetera. If that is not successful or the nature of the crime is serious where they think informal handling is not appropriate, at that time, probation will submit the filing to the district attorney's office. So by the time we receive a filing, oftentimes the minor has already had an opportunity to handle the case informally, either through the law enforcement agency or through the probation department. At the time the district attorney's office receives the filing, we review the police reports thoroughly and whatever um, type of discovery, videotapes, audio recordings, and other things um, in order to determine whether or not it's appropriate to file the case. We are ethically bound to only file cases where we can prove the crime beyond a reasonable doubt. If we feel that it is a fileable case, the district attorney will file it.